Hello and welcome to episode 87 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is April 7th and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello everyone. So do you know what the AZ SAP assessments are? Probably not, but after this episode, you most likely want to get started using them right away. So Etienne and JT are here joining us today to talk about these assessments that show how Microsoft does not only help you get started with SAP on Azure, but also show you how to um, ensure that your SAP system keeps running on the most optimal configuration. But before we hand over to um, both of them, let's take a look at the news from this week. And I actually want to start with an update um, on a GitHub repository for the Azure API management. Um, so some time ago, we already talked about uh, some policies that Martin Pankratz had um, published on the API management, the Azure API management um, solution. And he keeps updating um, the policies with the latest and greatest feedback that we are getting from, from customers um, with um, implementations that, that we are seeing to really make sure that we have this authentication flow end-to-end -end working. So here, this is just the, the, uh, the, the actual policy that you would implement in Azure API management. But as uh, you can see here, there, there are quite a few um, policies available. And the idea is that you just install them to Azure API management and then in this specific case, we have this flow that you can um, connect to an OData service or, or an OData service that is um, um, configured via the Open API specification or exposed via the or described as with the Open API specification. Then in this API policy, we handle the whole token exchange. So retrieving the tokens from Azure Active Directory, um, um, using these tokens to authenticate against the SAP system, and then really have this full um, authentication um, flow working. We also do the XCSRF handling in the API management policy. So, so it's a really beautiful policy that helps you get started to connect um, to your SAP system um, via Azure API management. Then another thing that I want to highlight, um, since we also have Etienne um, joining us today, you, you might remember him from a um, previous episode where he, he talked um, about a hackathon that they did together with SAP, um, where the where, where they had invited several partners to build applications running on BTP and, and Azure services. And a similar event just took place uh, yeah, last week, basically, where again, um, several partners were invited for this hack to build um, hackathon. And the idea was again, just leverage technologies from the SAP side, leverage technologies on the on the Microsoft side, and then um, get get started, build some some scenarios. And there were some some really cool um, solutions again um, developed within only a few days, and it was really great to see. Um, I mean, my personal favorite of, obviously was that a lot of of these partners used uh, the Power Platform, um, which I think obviously is, is a fantastic match for uh, building quickly beautiful solutions. And they were able to connect to an SAP system there, retrieve data using Azure Storage, using some um, ML services on the Azure side. So it was really um, a cool exercise. And I, I hope that that will not only see here this, this one slider, but that we'll also see um, more and more of the results of um, what the partners have developed um, during these um, seven days or so. Um, moving on, um, Goran, you found just uh, and brought up a new topic on the Azure site recovery. Um, yeah. So. Uh... Uh, the 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 point is uh, ju just to set up a little bit of context. Um, we have something called uh, reserve virtual machine instances, you know, and then we also have something on on demand capacity reservation. So uh, reserve instances were there in the past, and uh, that would mean that you you could get some discounts for cer certain uh, VM types. Um, however, that's sometimes often confused that the, this uh, reserve instances give you also the capacity reservation, which is not true. You know, meaning uh, there is no um, there is no guarantee that you will get the the desired capacity, and that sometimes could uh, create some challenges. Let, let me say a typical scenario would be a DR uh, a failover. For example, you try to do a DR. And uh, you 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 don't have enough capacity because everybody would do maybe DR in the case of 
theoretical case of the whole region failure. Now, on-demand capacity is giving you a, a really, a, is doing a capacity reservation. It, it is a guaranteeing <clears throat> that that uh, you, you will get really those instances and you can start them. Now, a, a nice thing, it's uh, typically Azure site recovery is used often uh, in the DR uh, scenario. And there is a basically, uh, <clears throat> uh, this is about the GA, about the integration between the Azure site recovery and on-demand capacity. So, I mean, which makes sense, right? It, yeah. it just makes sense. And uh, that that's a kind of just nice thing to uh, make it life uh, easier for customer. Um, and there is, and then basically another <clears throat> topic uh, which is about the uh, uh, cross-region snapshot copy. Um, on, on the manage this, we have uh, snapshots, right? Uh, and those snapshots can be used to restore uh, the disks. Uh, and then after that came something which is called incremental snapshots. So basically, um, after you do a snapshot, you're doing uh, a smaller uh, incremental snapshot, just to basically you're doing a delta. Um, this GA is about the cross-region uh, uh, copy of those kind of incremental snapshots. So uh, I, I see this really as a kind of um, op pot huge potential also uh, definitely in the SAP context. So um, um, the, the RTO is basically reducing also the copying from one region to, to mm -hmm. another region is being basically reduced. So RTO is basically also re reduced. So I, I think this kind of feature has also a huge potential also in the in the uh, future SAP scenarios, definitely. So maybe just interesting also the customer and partners take a look in it. Yeah. So that that's that's the that's the same. Just going more into detail about those incremental snapshots, so to say. Yeah, you you can skip it. Right. And Great, about thank this you. first topic, what men, uh, Gora mentioned, we in episode 62, uh, we discussed a little bit deeper about cap right. capacity reservation. Yes, so and differences. Take a look on Correct. that episode. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point where, where we had yeah. Nick um, joining us and explaining what it means. Right. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. You have a fantastic memory, and even you know the episode number. <laughs> no, I have it here on the list on the left side. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. <laughs> Good. Um, I think that's that's already um, most of the, the the news now. Now just some uh, two uh, highlights for for the German speaking audience. Um, there is a Power Platform Learning webinar series. Um, so it is in German, but it's a it's a cool collection of webinars that are coming up. So really, how to get started with Power Platform and Teams. And and again for me, when when we talk about low code, no code um, solutions, and 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 why I'm so fascinated about the Power Platform. It's not necessarily that you can build a, a new application easily, but how it integrates in the Microsoft ecosystem. So like how it integrates in Teams, in Excel, in Outlook and so on. That's for me one of the huge benefits here. And, and the series starts with Power Platform and Teams and then how to build a, um, a center of excellence. And um, so all the, this whole governance processes. Then yeah, and then then a few other um, webinars that yeah talk about um, in the end also monitoring and and uh, um, analyzing what's going on. So I think um, if you are interested in in, in the Power Platform, then um, definitely um, check this out. One last thing, also in Germany, uh, in in German, there is a new um, webinar for the or from the Azure um, Architects Connect series with um, SAP and Azure. So our um, colleagues. Bernhard and Bernhard Fries, who was also on on the show some time ago, and I think someone else, but I um, Oliver Oliver is there. Ah, Oliver, yeah, yeah, thank you. They are um, presenting yeah SAP and and, and Azure. So so basically, um, giving a, a good starting point again, or why does it make sense to migrate your SAP system um, on on Azure? So you can also um, attend and ask a lot of questions. So I think this this will also be really um, a really valuable uh, webinar here. But with this, um, we're already done with the news for for this week, and um, w I would really like to welcome again Etienne and, and JT joining us today. So maybe before you 
um, talk about the, the the content. Maybe you can quickly introduce yourself. Um, what are you doing at, at at Microsoft? And yeah, then then we're looking forward to your content. Yeah, I'll I'll jump in first. Uh, I'm going to try this one. It's a, it's an intro I've used a little while ago um, in uh, at uh, at Microsoft Ready um, a long time ago when I was still still a lot younger than I am today. But uh, I'll try it out here today. So let's see. So my name is Etienne Dietrich. Uh, I'm a principal program manager um, as part of our engineering uh, division, um, looking at customer solutions and incubations. My focus is SAP on Azure. But as the intro really goes, you know, Etienne Dietrich, it's a French first name, a German last name. I'm born and bred in South Africa. I spent most of my adult life in the UK, and now I live in rural New Zealand, part of a global team. So you could argue I either have a bit of an identity crisis or I'm a true global citizen. JT, over to you. <laughs> thank you, Adil. First of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to share the latest and greatest on SAP on Azure for our customers. Uh, I'm Jitendra Singh. I'm working as a principal program manager for Microsoft Customer Solutions and Incubation Team. I'm a colleague of Etienne, and we are also missing some of our core members. So I just want to call out Ross, Taka, and Hemant are the, some of our core members working on the initiative. So, and we are here really to talk about Microsoft tools and frameworks for SAP on Azure customers under Cloud Excellence for SAP. These tools and framework will be integrated with our Azure first party product. So stay, so stay tuned for more updates. Now, to start with, why we really spending efforts to, on the, the, some of the announcements? So what we believe is like with the advancement of the technology and innovation, there will be a point in near future where customers will be able to get the required solution from any provider. We believe the differentiator will be customer experience that will make or break the deal. So at Microsoft, we are working very hard on several initiatives to further improve the customer experience on Azure platform. And we are looking for opportunities to connect with our customers and partners, connect and take the feedback and come up with tools and programs mm -hmm. to help improve the customer experience. So today, what we are going to talk about is like, what are the areas we are, to, uh, we are focusing today and what we have um, from assessment perspective. So uh, at a very high level, we have six pillars that we really want to focus on. That is process improvement, solution development, reference architecture, operations optimization, product development and innovation. We keep customers requirement at the center. We go through each pillar, try to find out if there's any gap in our offering. And if we find any gap, we are trying to come up with tools and programs to address uh, those gaps, right? So today uh, we have two initiatives. One is assessment that we are going to talk about, and then another is a health check that we will, uh, you know, there, there might be a, a sneak peek on that. So let's talk about assessments. So now assessment is a paper-based exercise. As part of assessment, we do not connect to any Azure resources. Customer will be able to access assessment through Microsoft assessment platform. They just need to log in and complete the assessment. Assessment uh, is in the format of questionnaires and answers, and it is very critical because before customer or partner starts deploying the resources onto Azure, the design, critical design areas must be clarified or discussed so that there's an educated decision. So what is it? Uh, it is going to be a self-service tool Customer do not need to really work with Microsoft uh, at every stage of this. They can simply go to our assessment platform, quickly run the uh, complete the assessment, and there will be output. And the outcome, if it is in line with customer's expectation, then no further action required. But then if there are further queries, then we work directly with customer and partner to help create them with a the roadmap. So this is how it works. Customer assesses it, they access the platform, they go through the questionnaires, they make some selections, then there's an output, and then based on the output, a customer will be able to create the roadmap. Now, who is it JT, for? Can, yeah? So, sorry, can I quickly ask you, when would I do this? So if I'm a customer, would I do this? Um, let's say I've not yet even decided to go to Azure. I, I know that I want to migrate my SAP systems to the cloud somehow, but I've not yet made my decision. 
would I already do this in this stage um, just to see, well, what can I do with Azure? Or would I do this when I say, no, 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 look, I, I looked at all the cloud providers. Azure seems to really be the, the best choice. So um, I want to go to Azure and then I take the assessment. Yeah, great question. So what we do is like uh, we have different motions based on where customer is at with their journey and based on that, like we provide different options uh, from assessment perspective and we will be talking about in the next slide. OK, yeah, and then who is it for? Really, it's uh, more addressed um, uh, to SAP basis, cloud solution architect, really technical management team and why? Uh, why we need assessment? We definitely want to uh, work with our customer and partner to improve quality of uh, deployment on Azure platform so that we can make Azure platform best platform for our SAP workload. So let's talk about what we have under assessment. So under assessment, we have different uh, motions that we talk about. Uh, and then uh, this was a question like uh, you had. So if a customer is running on premise, or they're running on uh, another cloud provider, right? And they're thinking of like, okay, what happens if I want to move to Azure? What is the best way to like plan and think about it? So that's go forward motion. When like customers are new to our platform and they're still exploring, they have not made decision. They want to understand like how Microsoft can help me to achieve the best result with my migration. So that will basically be addressed by go forward motion, which is enterprise scale landing zone for SAP. Now, enterprise scale landing zone for SAP was released last year, and it's like a GA. What we are basically doing here is with enterprise scale landing zone for SAP, we do have a, a good template of PowerPoint, and it goes and talks about eight critical design areas, and it touch bases. Uh, it, it it really connects and talk about like, okay, what are the different options available, right? So when we talk about management group and subscription, how many subscriptions are required? And based on uh, some of the areas like uh, specialized uh, technology, like uh, Azure Net file or HANA large instance, there will be some dependency between critical design areas. So the intention is really for customer to go through the assessment and see if they are doing everything that is recommended uh, from SAP on Azure best practices perspective. Right, uh, and then uh, I will move to the other motion and then I will hand it over to Ajahn. So let's say a customer went through enterprise scale landing zone and now they understand what are the critical design considerations are there across these eight uh, pillars. And what will happen is like the output of enterprise scale landing zone is really a reference architecture, what they really want to deploy, how many subscriptions, how many VNets, how many virtual machines, and like all the connectivity with the hub and everything else. Now uh, they are ready with the uh, reference architecture. Now they really want to start deploying it, right? And that's where the second motion comes, which is deployment motion. Now the deployment motion is really for new and existing customers. So a customer, like for example, they are new to Azure, then they, they need to go through the best practices that we have published. Uh, to start with project preparation planning, pilot phase, non-production, production, go live and post go live phase. But how it is going to uh, work for existing customer? Now, uh, like we are releasing so many innovations on Azure, so there can be a minor release or major release. So for example, last year we released Azure Premium Files. Now, if a customer is using some different technology to host highly available share and they are thinking to move to Azure Premium Files, mm -hmm. then it will be good to still go through the deployment motion and make sure they are aware on the latest guidance. So for example, like PPG and all, so we keep on updating our guidance. So this is basically to make sure customer is directly connecting to a tool that gives them latest and greatest uh, from a SAP on Azure best practices perspective. And then just to complete all the motions, the third motion is stabilized motion. This is for customers who are already running their SAP workload onto Azure, and they are really in stabilized motion, right? So uh, they, they went live, uh, and after a couple of months, they are trying to understand, okay, what new is coming uh, from a Microsoft perspective, right? And then what can be done in next three to six months? So to make sure customer got access to those kind of details, they will be able to quickly go and yeah, you know, when we will quickly do the demo as well, but then a well architected framework for SAP is basically going to take customer throughout these pillars like reliability, 
what is coming new in terms of HADR perspective, right? Security, cost optimization, operational excellence, and performance efficiency. The output of WAF is really a score where we say, okay, customer, you're doing great in some areas, but maybe there are some areas where you can improve further, right? And then uh, like we initiate dialogue with customer and help them to create a roadmap. What are the quick wins and what can be considered uh, uh, in next 30 to 60 days. So with that, I will hand it over to Atem because he's going to talk about deployment. Yeah, yeah th th thank you. Thank you, JT. Um, keep that on the screen. I'll just have a little bit of a chat and, and go a little bit more into detail, and then I'll take us through some of the actual phases. And we look at some of the typical expected deliverables uh, from a Microsoft perspective when our customers move to Azure. Um, and uh, you'll get a feel of what this deployment checklist is doing. And then we'll run just through a, a practical, practical or a hypothetical customer's practical scenario where we can look at some of the, 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 the details on how we score and how we use this checklist to at the end of the day make sure that we actually conform to our published uh, best practices. So the AZ SAP um, COE deployment checklist is a program management utility and that tracks customer migrations against conformance to best practice. Best practice is, pr is pretty wide, but in this case, we define best practice as the tried and tested approach to safeguard SAP migrations to Azure, and at the end of the day, really reducing that risk. The deployment checklist was initially created, um, you know, but based on a lot of learnings um, from what our customers experience right in the early days. And this was initially published on docs.microsoft.com. But uh, under the COE construct, we've taken it a little bit further and, and we thought, well, it's not always easy to go and find the relevant information on docs.microsoft.com. And, and sometimes, you know, the information jumps a little bit and sometimes not all of the constructs are always up to date and it it becomes a little bit of a challenge for customers who want to kind of score themselves or measure themselves in their projects where they as JT mentioned either starting brand new or they might want to do a modernization or, or maybe a customer runs on any DB and they want to move to S4 HANA and they might want to redefine how they do things in Azure and maybe use a little bit more of the standard enterprise scale landing zone constructs and, and things like that. So it's not just tailored at, at Greenfields um, or new customers. It's also a good place for those customers to use the deployment checklist. Um, but essentially, what we're trying to do here is give you an at a glance view of how any migration project is tracking against these best practices at any given point in time. So how better to learn ourselves and see if there's merit in continuing with this mad exercise. So we piloted this at a, at a couple of customers and we soon find out that, look, the deployment checklist as documented is a little bit out of date. Um, it's missing some of the latest technologies that has been recently certified. And, and I guess we can all understand that. But that just showed us that, that look, we need to kind of get a, a harmony going where, where we always get the most up-to-date information to our customers. So hence the deployment checklist was born. Now, to gain the best benefit from these, uh, from these checklists, there's a few things to consider and plan before you actually just dive in, either as a customer or a customer and Microsoft in partnership, before you just dive in and start running your products um, or projects. Firstly, you need to understand how our project milestones or phases typically map to that of the customer. Now, we talk about things like a pilot phase and a project prep and planning phase and a non-prod phase. Some customers might say, well, we're in development or we're in our testing phases or we're in pre-production in a landscape or we're busy doing user acceptance testing. So there's a rough map of, of, of how our phases will typically match to those customer projects by themselves. But before we before we go into the, the, the scoring and the example, um, I just want to kind of explain a little bit about how we engage here um, as, as the SAP on Azure deployment engineering team. Um, so of, of course, Tracking a project is not is not a, a easy thing to do. Um, you know, you you've you've got in these SAP migrations, you've got 
three, four, five, ten program managers, project management, each doing a part of that. So, so you can imagine that that if they get another tool or another methodology, it's just a little bit more work for them to do. So that's why we try and avoid the customer to get bogged down into it. And we really engage with our Microsoft uh, Cloud Solution Architects in the Customer Success Unit um, with a little bit of enabling. And together, we will rock up to our customers. Um, and based on the information that we have through previous engagements or or partaking in, in some of the customer activities, we'll start that, that kind of scoring on behalf of the customer. But at the end of the day, we kind of have to track what we do. We got to kind of record what information we find, whether it's in a high level design or a low level design or or maybe an HADR strategy. And we kind of start collecting artifacts and we start building out this uh, this, this checklist. Um, it's 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 also fair to say that we try to create one ring to rule them all. And in SAP on Azure World, that's really not always the case because we are catering for customers who want to run Oracle on Windows, or we're running. We're catering for customers who want to run DB2 on Linux, as an example. So our, our guidance is obviously quite comprehensive. Um, so one of the first things we want to do is obviously ensure that we are filtering out all of the noise. So where a customer purely runs S4HANA, they're not going to have any Oracle um, uh, on Windows, as an example, in their landscape. So we don't want to kind of negatively score customers if they haven't configured the stripe sets correctly for an oracle on 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 logical volume so so we just want to want to make it a little bit tighter and um, relevant to the customer so we mark things as not applicable <clears throat> now if i can uh, just quickly share over JT and uh, I've just got a couple of slides that I just want to explain what the typical deliverables are uh, that Microsoft expects us to see. Um, just let me know if you guys can see my screen. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. So look again this is an invitation for our customers and our partners to try and and improve the way that they run their projects and essentially design and deliver um sap on azure migration so by no means is this a mandate or forcing everybody down there but there's a good reason why we're inviting customers to follow best practice so when you look at typically the project preparation and planning phases you know it's not rocket science but you'd expect the customer to have a project plan a, a, a reiki matrix or a racy matrix saying who are going to be delivering what parts of the project, who's responsible or accountable or informed in various different deliverables or actions or activities or tasks throughout the project. Things like a high level design, you'd be surprised we actually come to customers and they haven't done high level design. So um, again, it, if, you, if you look at just the typical deliverables here, you, you think this is a lot a lot of it should be self-explanatory, but to be honest, a lot of customers have never moved to the cloud, so they don't quite understand these things, and that's why we're there to help them. So, um, you know, one of the biggest hitters are always, you know, what do our customers do for high availability and disaster recovery? And we've got so many options there, it often causes confusion. So we try and guide customers about what's best for them and things like that. But at the start, we want to make sure that they, there's a couple of things that, that they need to think of early on. Right, things like what storage are we going to use? What operating system strategies are we going to define? Security needs to feature on fairly early on. Then as you kind of have your planning and preparation done, from a Microsoft perspective, we highly, highly recommend to run a pilot. Now, this doesn't have to be a full-blown, 100% comprehensive uh, pilot of every single system and combination there possibly is. But the key message here is that we see customers who engage in these pilots early on. They learn fast, and what they find in the pilot often informs their later design phases. It refines more of those designs because they might find that this storage solution doesn't quite do what I want it to do and it doesn't quite meet my business requirements or my non-functionals. So the pilot is really, really important to learn early on and then avoid some of those mistakes and avoid known pitfalls as you go. Now, after you've de deployed a pilot, a pilot environment, you've spun up some VMs, you've got your landing zone there, you can then obviously do some unit based validations like how fast is a singular p30 disk under this vm and you kind of record those baselines and uh, things like that make sure you maybe trial your migration approach some customers might want to use a backup restore others might want to go uh, into a db replication mode and we basically recommend that you need to do that early on and we'll actually track our customers according to to how well they, they do that 
Then in the non-production phases, and, and this is typically, you know, your development time, your testing time, you at regression testing, performance testing, these things often spans multiple phases or milestones in the customer's projects. But fundamentally, this phase suggests we're still in a build capability, build and test. We're not gone live yet. Um, so this is where we start working on those build materials, those build lists, make sure that automation can pick things up and build the environment to the best of its uh, capabilities. We also want to start benchlining our on-premise performance performance stats at this point in time so that when we start building our QA environments in, in the cloud um, where we could be running some more performance related tests, we can start analyzing some of those discrepancies. Um, um, and yeah, as, as you go through these phases, we inherently come to that to that kind of pre-production phase or kind of final validation phase. Some some customers call it dress rehearsals, some call it mocks, um, but basically this is where we, we kind of have gone through most of the non-production activities. We've migrated systems, we've tuned them, we've changed them. Now we want to make sure that, you know, there's no hidden surprises and, you know, we're doing our final operational acceptance testing with failovers to different regions. And that's that's what customers need to know that they need to plan in for those and make sure it's sure it works at that point in time. So um, I guess one of the key things is the more you test, the better for any SAP on Azure uh, uh, migration. Of course, we don't have endless time and budgets, so we can't test everything, but we strongly feel, for example, that you have to at least do two mocks or two cutovers uh, or dress rehearsals prior to your actual go live phase. And then this go live phase is obviously crunch time. That's where these projects have been running for eight, nine, 18 months uh, is coming to a head um, by this time. If you followed your best practice, you've built according to reference architectures, you've sorted out your, your, your weak points in your design and build, you've tested, 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 you should have high confidence that the go live phase is gonna be very, very easy to sail into. Um, it, but you got to also think about not just going live and turning on your systems in Azure. You always have to think about that dreaded cutover task list in, in the basis world that often contains thousands of activities right through from drain stopping systems uh, into and informing informing the, the, the business community that there's going to be an outage and setting your maintenance page on all of your load balancers. You know, those kind of things we do. We then pull the, tr the, 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 the trigger and the floodgates open. We promote those systems to productive capability and uh, that that's uh, the customer is going live but of course we know that's not where it stops so there's a lot to think about after that go live and after you've settled in uh, once all of the priority one issues are subsiding a little bit um, that's when you need to start thinking about kind of what do I do next going forward and how do I maintain my my, my SAP on Azure and this is where some of the post-production phases come in where you're going to start thinking cost management you know you want to maybe simplify your operations, look at snoozing automation. Um, you might want to think about how can I now build new environments for testing or maybe do data refreshes. And these kind of things come in while you've got a, obviously an eye on, on handing over to, to your end state, which is the BAU operations team, and the project goes away. So, so that's the phases. Now, what I want to do at this point in time is just, just very quickly um, give us a, a quick demo, just a couple of minutes of what the deployment checklist looks like. So, as you can see, we we've been working on a hypothetical customer here. We've scored them throughout their phases, and you know, when we do the post implementation review and see, and we see, well, why did we have so many errors in in HA failover or something like that in the first two months after go live? We can come back to this uh, deployment checklist and say, look. We've done really well, you know, we have did really, really well in our non-production phases. Um, we've got a really good score. We did really well through go live. Post-production, we've got a couple of things still outstanding, but fundamentally what jumps up is we actually didn't do a really good pilot. So that meant that the project timelines had to condense. We got to parallelize and we kind of didn't choose the best HA option for us. So now we've got a little bit of a problem um, in this hypothetical customer scenario. So. Um, as I said, this is a little bit of a program or project management tracker. Um, it, it, it's based, it's not rocket science, but it's based on that official SAP mm. on Azure uh, workload planning and deployment checklist, which is sometimes a little bit uh, tricky to consume in one go. But uh, we've now got a really friendly way that we can programmatically, strategically, um, phase by phase, go and help our customers. So 
what we've done is we've ported all of the documentation text into essentially a, a, a spreadsheet. And what we want to do in this spreadsheet is go through the phases. Now we can score either something as fully conformant, partially conformant, not conformant or not applicable. So the not applicable ones are, are obviously the, the example of Oracle in a pure SAP S4 HANA environment. Those ones we can mark not applicable. The difference between fully conformant and partially conformant is, is if all of the boxes are checked, literally. If there's nothing that we can we can argue about that it doesn't meet the requirements or meets the expectations, then, then an item is fully conformant. Partially conformant is where you, for example, um, are looking at uh, certified virtual machines. And of course, we all know this uh, this lovely SAP note, but in our, in our customer's case, we, we obviously chose deliberately to use a very small uh, HANA VM for our development environment, which is not certified. The customer understands, of course, the impacts of that, but uh, from a pure best practice perspective, that is a, an area where there's improvement um, possibilities and we can make it fully conformant, for example, by choosing a certified HANA VM um, to run that develop, small development system on. So as you go through the phases, you literally have the ability to document where did I find information about our data transfer to Azure as an example. This was in the network, network standards document mm -hmm. version one, right? So we know where to find that argument. Um, we can make some comments if a customer is non-conformant. After that, for example, in this case, we said a pilot is really important and we really want you to look at your high availability and disaster recovery tests during your uh, pilot. You know, you need to understand what there is, but the customer decided they're not going to do that. They mark these not conformant. Now, if a customer doesn't want to run this App Central services um, with high availability, that's really uh, a, a choice of the customer. From a Microsoft perspective, we need obviously need to make sure they understand what impact that has if they don't, for example, build in HA into their single points of failures. But we can always record the comment that uh, um, at meeting X, X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. a decision was made um, to, to, to go with a single instance rather than a clustered uh, uh, configuration. So this is, this is, you know, what we found with some of our pilot customers is that this feeds into the overall program risk log. Mm -hmm. where where the, the project managers will come on on a regular basis and see how we're tracking. And if we see a lot of red, they want to understand why. So um, I hope it's clear for everybody here, just the kind of two or three minutes that I just talked about this, that um, something very simple born out of a spreadsheet can really easily give you a quick at a glance view of where you've got some hotspots in your project. So again, this is a paper-based exercise. We, we're not accessing any resources. Um, it's kind of just an ability to help our customers plan. Um, and, and some of the feedback we had from early pilot customers was, you gave this to me six months too late. Uh, they would have loved to have something like this at the start of their project so they could work that into their plans and things like that. So. So yeah, we, we're getting really good feedback, um, but but again, you know, it's it's not it's not something new. It's something we're working with on various teams, uh, owning the documentation, um, and and we we feedback in our loops and saying, look, uh, we now have this uh, opportunity to run the deployment checklist. Customers say, well, you're asking very specific questions about Azure NetApp files. Um, I think why why don't you start talking to me about some of the new features there and update that in your documentation? And as you can see, again, the feedback loop from the customer has the ability to go to various teams in the back end. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll stop at that point um, and uh, hand hand back uh, if that's okay. Yeah, maybe yeah. one quick question that, that comes to mind immediately. Yes. So where can I get this? Is this linked in the um, doc, uh, hold, hold on, on doc? You you know me and my my uh, spreadsheets. I think the other other one I, I I visited your show was with my blogs and the the scoring mechanism to define your yes. best region um it's uh, it's in github so uh, by all means um uh, we'll we'll share we'll share that we'll share that with you so it's uh, it's uh, in github uh, you can download the spreadsheet and and go from there perfect yeah and in general like uh, microsoft contact will be able to uh, onboard customers onto this we are using forms internally so that like you know csam or csa is working with customer will be able to nominate yeah. their customer and then we work with them mm -hmm. But, but, so but let's so, talk about, so, 
Yeah. Where, where, but it doesn't mean I can only use this with Microsoft. So no, um, no, I can no, also no. do this on my own. If I'm on, on, a, on a journey, then I will just go to GitHub, to the GitHub repository, uh, I'll download it, I'll work through it. Absolutely. And obviously, and I that's can our end game out. is we, we want to get it out to, to everyone because that's how we scale. You can't have a Microsoft representative on every single exactly. migration project. That's just not, not practical. But while we're in the early phases, we want to make sure that we get feedback Perfect. from the customers, refine the process. And, and, and then once it kind of launches big, then, then of course, everybody can get it. Right now, we're still in, in kind of piloting and prototyping versions. But of course, anybody can have access to that and and, and, and feedback uh, to us in, and we'll, we'll welcome that. Bad feel, negative feedback, please, because we don't just want to hear it's good because then we don't, don't improve it. So please. Yeah, and we'll quickly go through a WAF uh, demo. So basically now a customer has already migrated their workload onto Azure. And now after a couple of months or years, they're trying to understand like what else can be done to improve the quality of their deployment. So the WAF, uh, as we were discussing, it's available on a Microsoft assessment platform. So customer will be able to directly access it over the internet. They don't really need to work with Microsoft in general, right? Now the flow is really, they connect to this link, they log in with their user ID, and then they decide what is important for them at that point in time, right? Whether they are concerned about reliability, security, cost optimization, operation excellence, or performance efficiency. They can select one or more based on their uh, requirement at that point in time. So let's go through the flow. So for example, a customer goes and says, okay, I want to go through each pillar to understand like where I stand and what can be done to improve uh, my deployment quality. So they will start the assessment and then there are a few specific questions like what reliability targets and metrics have you defined for your SAP application on Azure? Now, the intention of these questionnaires and some of the like uh, options that we provide here is to better understand our customer and their deployment. Right, so we will basically ask a very specific question like hey, SL is have you considered SLEs, right? Or have you considered your managed disk type that supports minimum single VM SLA, right? So they will say, okay, yeah, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, whether I'm ability metrics and monitors are in place, yeah. And then they will say, okay, I'm not doing composite SLA today. So they will not select the option that we are providing here. Also, SLA for external dependency that's identified and understood. They will say, yeah, you know, like we are very much focusing on SAP workload. So maybe we are not doing SLAs for external um, like you know, parties. So based on the status, they will basically go ahead and select some of the options that they think they are doing, right? Because this is still paper-based exercise. So they will go through each and every questionnaires, and then what will happen is like uh, once they reach to the final question, they will uh, reach to a point where it says view guidance. Now, mm -hmm. as soon as customer clicks on view guidance, there is a output. Now, this is the output where customers uh, like uh, get a visibility of like what we think customer is doing uh, from a reliability perspective. So based on the selection, customer is doing excellent in, in, in terms of reliability. Of course, there's still a room to improve, but they are already doing uh, you know, great. Now, security is moderate, cost optimization is moderate, operation excellence is uh, excellent, and then performance efficiency moderate. Now, let's say customer uh, uh, look at the result and says, okay, yeah, this is what I was expecting. Right, so there's no surprise here. So they don't need uh, to connect with Microsoft now, right? Because they say, okay, I'm going to run this exercise after uh, every three to six months. Make sure like it aligns with what my expectations are. Now, in general, like uh, as a default, we will always give some of the general recommendation to say like how they can further improve the quality of their deployment. But let's say customer says, hey, why cost optimization is moderate? I've spent a lot of efforts and all. I really want to understand like how can I get cost optimization into excellent. In that case, customer will export uh, the data into CSV, right? And then they will be able to connect with the Microsoft context, CSAM mm -hmm. or CSA. And then what will happen is like we, because currently like it is in the um, you know, pilot phase, uh, our team gets engaged and then we have an executive summary template. What we really do here is we really try to say, okay, let's connect with customer and then try to take some of the feedback, what customers thinks and all, right? And then we uh, literally uh, start the execution summary to say, like, this is what we saw in your um, assessment. And then 
we go through each and every pillar and we talk about, OK, with cost optimization, there are things you are doing good, right? But then there are areas that can further improve. And what is our generic recommendation, right? And that we go through each and every pillar and then provide like areas that we think can be further improved uh, and all right. So one of the example um, uh, for one of the customer that we did uh, was in, under reliability. The customer was using uh, AV set. So customer's expectation was to get a SLA of 19.95 and customer was using Oracle database, but then automatic failover was not configured because of Oracle data guard license and other things. So that was the area that we highlighted saying like, although at the infrastructure level, you mm -hmm. are configuring your virtual machine to support 10.95, but because at the database level, you are not uh, configuring automatic failover, it's not going to help in, 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 a, in a, a SLA perspective, right? So that's how the, that's how like flow works. And then at the end, uh, as uh, the objective of the assessment is, we come up with a roadmap. What oh, customer nice. can do in next three to six months? Plus, what are the quick wins? So we basically say, okay, just quickly go to inventory checks for SAP and make sure you are following the, all the best practices. And then for the customer, like we said, okay, you need to review uh, Ahab, right? And then there was they were not doing automatic DR. Uh, when we say auto DR is like more about recovery plan and all, right? So those were the roadmaps that we created with customer. And then CSAM, CSA will continue to follow. And this will also give Microsoft an opportunity to understand like if there are areas where a deep uh, discussion is required uh, with customer, right? Coming back to the assessment form, uh, what happens is like uh, under each and every question, because a customer can use it as a self-service, we are making sure there is an option for customer to directly provide feedback, right? If they are not happy with some question, or if they think like, hey, this uh, you know selection doesn't make sense, or why you are like uh, uh, very specific to a specific service, then that feedback can be provided, and uh, our team will review and work on it. Yeah, yeah. I just want to add something here, JT, if you don't mind, because uh, I, I, I'm currently running assessments with, with some customers in this side of the world, um, and 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 what I found is a byproduct actually of of this of this um, assessments framework is that. If you leave it to the customer to do it themselves, they'll probably spend a little bit of time. They get their experts in network and security and ask some questions and get it in. But if you run it as kind of a facilitated workshop, um, yeah. it's so powerful to run these well-architected framework reviews because you, you pause on a specific point for a very long time and you have a really good interactive discussion with the customer and you actually find out a lot more of where their pain points are so that so that you can actually, why are we here? We want to make our customers' lives better. And what better way to understand their true pain points and have such a good detailed conversation. So we find that that if we do this in a workshop format where we facilitate and work with our customers, we we really hear hear them loud and clear. Whereas if they want to do a quick self test, yeah, by all means, score, 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 and we, we will have help you review and understand it. But if it is that interactive approach with with Microsoft, the partner and the customer, there's a lot of value that that, that can be obtained from this. I can me that's something that I immediately can see. Um, you you have this red thread basically that you can go through. You have all these topics that are highlighted, and then you can really have these deep dive discussions. Um, or maybe there, there are some inspirations where a customer then all of a sudden think, oh, what about this and that, and then you can really go deeper and. You have the expert you got there. It, you got it. But 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 cool. what we're seeing today, uh, you know, is one part of what we're doing because. Yeah. As we said, this is a paper-based exercise. It's kind of a self-assessment by customers. They can run it themselves. They can highlight areas that need attention. And that's where some of the health check products, which, which we are working on, is coming in, where we actually then check the resources in Azure, make sure you've got your accelerated networking enabled, um, make sure that your your placement is correct and that your uh, load balancers are healthy and you know but don't want to say too much about that early on but but it's really important to understand that under the coe construct we can run just an assessment we can run just a deployment checklist we can just do enterprise landing zone 
or we can run a framework of assessments followed by a mm. real deep dive. And I'll hand over to JT just to talk to us a little bit about the health check. I know this is not the session, but we'll just give you a teaser of, teaser. of, of, of how that works and how that potentially relates to the process flow of how we engage with customers through their journeys. Right, and I will take like <clears throat> only one or two minutes. So we talked about assessments. Now assessment is more about a paper based exercise because it is critical that customer or partner understand the design considerations, right? Yeah. It is equally important as you deploy any resource. Now there will be questions like, OK, all, all everything is great with assessment, but still someone is making those selections. And if the person who is making those selections is not aware, then the output cannot can be slightly different than what we expect. So what Microsoft can do to really connect to resource and then showcase like whether the configuration is also correct or not. Because when we talk about design considerations and everything, as uh, Atina was mentioning, we will always go with this, go with saying, OK, accelerator networking will be enabled on all the virtual machines where it is applicable, right? And that will be a design consideration and that will be a selection when uh, assessment is performed. Now, and in the deployment to, checklist as well, while we're on accelerated networking, yeah, it, it, it flows through all, all of our tools and processes, right? Yeah, and so what we are uh, making sure is once assessment is done, then the logical next step is basically customer will be able to make use of Azure Health Check and Health Check got a tools and uh, like, you know, scripts that will actually connect to the resources and then perform some checks. Now what we have is like uh, uh, without going into detail, we have an inventory checks for SAP, which is really an Azure workbook and that will scan at a platform level and showcase if your VNet, your virtual machines, your desk, orphan resources, like everything will be displayed immediately and everything is on the fly, right? And that will help customer to understand, OK, how many virtual machines are, are running without accelerated networking or how many extensions are in failed status, right? Similarly, oh, great uh, call, right? We very feel very strongly about the ad, ad, advanced or the enhanced monitoring agent for, for SAP on Azure, right? So that's a, a, a VM extension that's deployed. Um, now we've got a, the ability to look at a subscription level down into all resource across resource groups and say, your SAP production subscription have got four VMs without the AEM uh, installed. So um, yeah, it's it's very powerful. This um, and it's it's the insights we gather from this is is fantastic because uh, we want to again tie everything back to that best practice, right? We mm -hmm. want to make sure we've got accelerated <clears throat> networking. We want to make sure if we run HANA on an M series that the right accelerator is configured on the log volume. You know those kind of really important best practices um, and we've taken those and we've built in uh, an inventory view from a subscription level down about everything you can run in your SAP subscription. Now, if you know, a lot of customers don't always just run SAP in one or two subscriptions, but then we start looking at resource groups and we can filter based on naming standards or potentially tags just to identify what is SAP and then we jump straight into it. Yeah, I, I think like we will leave uh, at that then. So basically it is more about the next um, uh, logical step will be customers will have opportunity to really start using health check once assessment is done and health check will give them an actual view of what is deployed uh, within the uh, Azure platform and uh, from an OS perspective. Uh, for, for that, like we have two tools. One is inventory checks for SAP. This is really a platform scan. It is not connecting to any virtual machine, OS, or anything else. It's just a basic uh, Azure resource graph queries. And the other one is the quality checks, which is more connecting to the virtual machine and doing OS related checks. And it checks like whether your OS parameter is correct or not, whether your pacemaker, uh, like you know, setting is correct or not, whether your storage is configured correctly or not. So those kind of uh, areas are there. But then why we are talking about this because we definitely want to create a bridge that this is not about only assessment. There's a logical step that customer is going to take once assessment is done. Yeah, exactly. If you identify reliability is a problem in your assessment, you want to come in here and you want to look at those areas that is specific to HA reliability, maybe performance, um, and you go further from that point onwards. Yep. So with that, I will say thank you very much, Olga um, uh, and team, right? Yeah, this uh, is great. great to be here. Perfect.
Yeah, one question, how you would deploy it? As far as I know, it's not difficult. Um, the health check tool that you just showed. Yeah, so it is already integrated in Azure portal. So what happens is like, uh, you know, there's a hidden link available today. So it is under monitor. So uh, whenever a customer is uh, onboarded onto health check, we will provide the link. Uh, we are aiming to uh, push it into public preview. So once it is in public preview, uh, customers will be able to simply go into monitor and under workloads under SAP, they will be able to find this workbook called inventory checks for SAP. And, and JT, I think we will have another deep dive with, with both of yeah. you on this. Um, well, well so we hope so, right? <laughs> we hope so. So we, we I obviously think... gave the audience a teaser, but uh, but that was double, double, uh, double no, no, aims absolutely. to give you a teaser too, so to have us back. Similar, similar, like watching a teaser for a movie and then you're all excited about finally seeing the movie. Now we we have a teaser for the health check, which which is really fantastic, and I, I'm we will definitely have you back on the show once once you're ready. I, I just want to quickly close also, um, but by by summarizing what what, what I saw because I, I think I mean the the assessments workshop is is obviously a fantastic way um to help customers get started. If if I'm new and that's something that I think um sometimes we also forget. I mean we are working with SAP on Azure day in and day out. So, so we know that you need to enable um, accelerated networking or that you need to look for certain certified HANA virtual machines and stuff like that. that that's, that's normal business for us. But if you are new to running SAP in the cloud or running SAP on, on Azure, then I think this guided procedure that, that you're providing customers and, and both in a, in a self-contained way that I don't need to talk to Microsoft, I want to do this on my own, then, then perfect. Then um, you have now the, the, the guidance, you have the documentations, you have a beautiful Excel sheet. Actually, maybe we could think of making a, a power app out of that. Um, so be um, awesome. that, that you don't have the, the Excel sheet. But but yeah. this is this gives me as a customer a beautiful guidance on how to get started. I, I have to admit what I like even more is the health check and one what comes after because we, we're clearly saying look we not only want to help customers get on azure but we also want to um make the experience on azure as best as possible and i think that i mean robert is is talking about this all the time that when you go to the cloud you need to completely switch your mindset how you operate and maintain an, an, an sap system it's very very different from what you do on premises. And, and one beautiful example for me is there always that um, there's so much innovation happening in the cloud. And, and where, where on premise, it was fine maybe to look after new hardware um, innovations every three years or something like that. In the cloud, you need, this, you need to do this much more frequently. And now with the health check, I, I guess we have an opportunity. We, I, I could run this every day or every week. And then if there is a new best practice that the, the configuration that was very much recommended for storage um, this year might be outdated Strange. in three months. And then if yeah. the health check shows me this, look, um, it was all fine, but now actually maybe it's better to change the configuration because um, the, the innovation on the cloud evolved. That's something where, where I th see a huge potential where, where we can really help customers run SAP on Azure in an always optimal way. And, and that's what, what I really like. So, so not only um, the, this onboarding of new customers to Azure, but really helping the customers once they are on Azure to get the best experience out of um, that, all the what, tools. That's what J, JT talked about. You, you know, in our, in, our, in our vision for this, is we we see that we see it already. You know, if you go into the supermarket, you buy a milk with a label, uh, and it's a good milk, or you buy another milk from another supermarket, and it's a good milk, and everybody's happy, and they cost the same or a cent or it's something different, and that's what infrastructure as a service has become, right? It's a commodity these days. You shoot, we, we, we not, we, we not, the, the war is not fought. Oh, my BVM is faster than yours or my disk is better yeah. than yours. It's, yeah. it's about that customer experience, right? Yeah. And, and that's, that's what our vision here for the center of excellence is, is to make sure that once the customer moves to Azure, that they can keep on getting the best out of the platform. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful closing remark um, for, for this episode. But again, um, we'll definitely have another deep dive um, with you on the health check and and, and, and what's new there on um, yeah the, the stabilizing motion and for existing customers as, as you highlighted it. So 
thank you so much for, for joining us, for giving us some fantastic teasers as well. And then we'll we'll see each other again um, soon, hopefully. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.